This, to me personally, will be one of my more interesting interviews because if you are especially an openly gay man and you ever stand up at a podium to speak or well, if you even have your own TV show, at some point, the deep, dark secret in all of our closets is, do I sound gay? Well, a documentary has been made about it, and here to talk about it is one of the Bay Area's best-known queer bloggers, Real Kev. Tell us the full name. Well, it's Kevin, Kevin M. M. Thomas. Uh, Kevin M. Thomas, not to be confused with another critic. Right, so Kevin M. Thomas, examiner.com. You can always find me at Real Kev, R-E-E-L, like a movie reel. Now, have you ever worried about sounding gay? David, I thought you invited me on because I sound gay. <laughs> yes, I, I, as a child, was so sounding gay, even before I knew I was gay. When I'd answer the phone, it's like, little girl, is your mom home? So I unconsciously would answer it, hello, hello, this is Kevin. Right, so even before you knew what gay was, you knew somehow my voice is something that people are going to make fun of and you're not comfortable with. What, what does that do to us as people? Well, I mean, you know, in, when I grew up, it's a little different now, but the, people are always bullied for some reason. So mm -hmm. I was, I'm fat and I was gay, so I couldn't hide the fat one, so I really tried to hide the gay one. Mm -hmm. Well, I did wear a lot of black, but... Did uh, it work? No, not really. <laughs> but, um, you know, so I would always go to school trying to, you know, hey, how, how, how's it going? How you doing? And when I get mad, I could, you know, but I sound like, you know, Fat Albert when I do that voice. <laughs> so. I mean, we're laughing about it, but this is serious. I remember being tortured as a child because I was good at reading, and so I would be picked to read. But, you know, the first time someone calls you Fairy Perry or uses the F-bomb, it does something to you. I mean, I, I spent my life then saying, well, I... I guess I'm going to have to learn to speak differently. So, you know, at age 53, I wonder sometimes, is this my real voice or it's somewhere back at five years old being teased on the streets of Richmond, Virginia, did this become my real voice? Well, I would think you'd have some more like from Virginia. First of all, I don't think you sound gay. If you go out there, they're not going to say, mm-hmm, there's another one. Um, you know, they might do that for me. Well, but after I, a couple drinks in a mart, you know, the Southern drawl thing, it happens. That does, but, okay. But my point is, what point in our lives did we realize it was a bad thing? Well, I think we realized when we were bad. children, yeah, air quote bad, it, it was bad because people made fun of us. People, children are really the cruelest people in the world. I mean, and maybe, you know, we get a thick skin later in life. Now, if someone says you sound gay, it's like, yes, I do. Right. You know, I don't care anymore. But it took us a while to be proud of it. Right. Well, you were here also to talk about a documentary yes. that has been made about this called Do I Sound Gay? And I think we've got about 30 seconds or so of footage. Let's take a look, but more to the point, let's take a listen to Do I Sound Gay? And I call the front desk. They always say, we'll have that right up to you, ma'am. Your voice can change, and I'm going to show you how right now. This is me, David. I'm a little mystified as to why I talk the way I talk. Do you guys think I sound good? When you say it like that, you do. <laughs> how and when did I learn to sound gay? I'm used to hearing my voice now. When I would first hear it, I would be appalled. Did you ever listen to yourself and think, God, I sound gay? I'd have to say, if I told you no, I'd be lying. A lot of gay men are self-conscious about sounding gay because we were persecuted for that when we were young. When I was in third grade, people started making fun of the way I talked, and that's when the bullying started. I felt so disconnected. I wasn't sure who to be or what to sound like. This thing of hypermasculinity is such a conscious performance in gay male culture all the time. It just feels so oppressive. Somebody will say, I didn't know you were gay. And it's like, why does that make me feel good? And I hate myself for thinking that. You know, it's it's hard to watch and, and listen to that. Um, I mean, we're laughing about it, but that whole phrase that came out a few years ago, oh, that's so gay. Right. You know, here we are within, you know, less than a month of a quote-unquote big Supreme Court decision where it says we can get married, but people will still beat kids up on the bus because they sound a little fanny. Or, or, or girls because they sound a little too butch. But see, bullies will beat up people for any reason that they want. It's not just because we sound gay. We also look black, we look ethnic, we look fat, we look poor. But... Um, but this movie is actually 
a, an important subject, but I just found it, it, he took it more on the light side. He does street interviews where he asks people, do I sound gay? Mm -hmm. And in more metropolitan cities, they said yes. But, you know, smaller cities weren't even sure because he didn't just do, like, in New York. He went to other right, little right, cities. Right. And you've got some famous people in this documentary. George Takei, Mr. Sulu of mm -hmm. Star Trek fame, who, I mean, talk about someone who actually has become more famous since coming out. Right. The funny thing is, he does not sound, he sounds like the most professional radio announcer ever. All his words are perfectly enunciated, clear. He has, like, that beautiful, silky voice. Um, but, you know, the movie talks to professionals, like the, the I think Michael Thorpe is his name, the director-writer, or it's not really a writer with mm -hmm. this documentary too much, but he goes to classes to learn how to lose the gay lisp. And it turns out in some of these classes, a lot of the other people aren't gay, they just sound gay. Right, right, right. We've only got about 30 seconds left, but tell me, besides the film, you do a lot of writing about arts here in the Bay Area, and I want to have you back talking about the fall theater season. What do you think is the gayest sounding actor we ever had? Oh my God, the gayest sounding actor we ever had. Um, Paul Lynn. I knew you were going to say that. And he's in that movie. Paul Lynn, Liberace, and um, Rip Torn are all in the movie, and they sound gay. They sound gay. But you know what? It's more they're flamboyant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the different part. Well, we'll, ha we'll have you on talking more about It Sounds Gay and your other stuff, too. Okay. Thank you very much. This is David Perry, hoping that I just sound professional, and boy, I am gay, so if I sound that way, you've outed me. Thanks for watching 10%. We'll see you next week.